actually going to be doing the uh, whistle tonight. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating tonight. I almost broke my son's heart. He's four and a half when I took it, took it to bring it to show to you. But it really does work. Because he, like, I want to play with it. You can, buddy, as soon as I get back. <laughs> you know, but I got to show, I got to show the one that worked off and then go through that. So it's really fun. I actually went into my wife's office this afternoon. We were working home together. When I said, let me sing you a song. Y'all know what song you sing that goes along with Popeye? Yeah, Popeye the Sailor Man. You know, I actually made a whistle once that looked like a pipe. So I could actually sing that song. <laughs> and but um, this is Bonnie Klein's book, um, uh, classic wood turning projects. Um, she presented at the AEW quite a bit and whatnot. And um, I actually saw her um, do a demo of this whistle at the AEW when I was here in Kansas City the previous time, not this summer. Um, I thought that was a really cool demo, and I started making whistles. I made lots and lots of whistles to send home with other people's kids. <laughs> okay. which is a fun part of the project to do um, so I hope everybody kind of likes that and maybe you, as, you're, as I'm going through you have some ideas about how to do that um, now anybody got a pen mill at home because this requires drilling a hole obviously we're going to drill the hole on the lathe today we're not going to use a pen mill we're not going to use a drill press so this whole project is on the lathe the only specialty tool you really need is a drill chuck that's pretty much it um, I hope everybody's got one of those. If you don't yet, find somebody who's not using theirs and borrow it and then don't give it back to them. Yeah. Okay? Because um, you'll realize just how handy it really is. <laughs> well, yeah, well you're, somebody just mentioned, yeah, you got to go get the tool when you need it. Yeah. yeah. I, mm -hmm. So I, I have a lot of friends and neighbors that had that same affliction. So I said, what do you need cut? I'll bring my chainsaw over and do it. That way I made sure I went home with my tools. So... Because my, my friends are very nice. However, they don't know boundaries. So, well, they have boundaries, but it's on their terms, not mine. <laughs> okay. So, who, so who won the center finder back there? All right. So, we're gonna, if you don't know how to use one, you're going to learn how here in just a minute. Okay. So, I'm going to find center on my piece of block of wood here. Let's see. Is it on the camera up above now? Okay. So, um, so you find center. And you need to mark all the way around all four sides. Because unless whomever milled this block of wood is perfect, they're not going to match up in center because it's not cut square. And this did come off of a um, off of a, um, a sawmill, not a not this was not one of those wonderful fine pieces you'd buy out front in the store. Um, so that's why I know it wasn't going to be square to start with. But I always do all four sides. You, if you want to measure from corner to corner, you can, but just by using a ruler. That's certainly how I learned how to do it. Go from the corner to corner and you'll always find center, or close enough. Remember, we're working with wood here. We're not working with machinists. Were there any machinists in the room? Yeah, I figured there was at least two or three of you. Or engineers, engineers. Yeah, yeah. Measure twice, cut once, right? You know the force they're made. Or like, uh, what's that, Murphy's Laws of Measurements? Right, measure with micrometer, mark with chalk, cut with axe. So yeah. So I'm just using a center punch to put holes in there so it's easy to see it and be able to use it. Um, I use a brad point bit because that's what I prefer to do when I'm gonna do this. Um, Cause it's, it gives me a place to start. So I'm gonna start over here. First I'm gonna look to make sure I can't see any visible signs where there's, I'm gonna do anything to affect my whistle. Ooh, that might be a crack right there. So we'll make that the other end of the whistle. Because you know this thing kind of has to hold air. It doesn't have to hold water, it kind of has to hold air. I tried to make a whistle once out of red oak. And well, you know, red oak's everywhere, right? The whistle has kind of a reedy sound. Like that. Because red oak is porous. If y'all ever get really bored, go out on the internet and do Google search smoke through red oak. And you can, that's got a person takes a puff on a cigarette and then puts their lips to a piece of red oak. It's only about an inch, inch long and they can actually blow the smoke through the pores in that red oak. Because that's how porous red oak is. And I didn't check the speed on this before I started it. So we're going to back that off for a minute. Do that check. 
and I don't need it anywhere that fast. That probably about right. Okay. Yeah, that's my fault for not checking it first. Okay, so now the fun part is the drilling. Now I'm not going to wrap my hand all the way around it, everybody, just in case anybody's wondering. I'm going to keep my hand open like this. You on the front row will get to enjoy that nice smell. I'm backing off occasionally to let the wood chips clear out. I'm going to go to a depth of three inches. I've made whistles that didn't have that deep of a whistle space in them. And I knew this was going to happen when I got to the throw of that tailstock. I was prepared for that though. Um, and I've done them shorter, it changes the tone of the whistle. Just a little, not a lot, but a little. Enough that you will notice. Now, when I told Jim he didn't have to tell everybody, you know, that one side was about the same size as the others, you don't have to tell anybody that, you know, that the whistle's not the same or there's something different about it. Okay? Or you'll be the only one that'll notice that the tone is different. But it kind of follows the 10 foot rule. If you can't see the mistake from 10 feet away, there is no mistake. <laughs> Once upon a time in my life, I, uh, I flew and sewed my own kites. And our rule was if you can't see it from 50 feet, there is no mistake in your sewing. So if you made a, new, made a new kite, you were the first one to get that kite in the air. So nobody could inspect it and criticize your work. I never worried about it because I was just happy the kite would fly. And I put that tape there to mark my three inches. Yay, we made it. Huh? Hold on a sec, let me get the blade turned off so I can hear you. What? What size drill is It's a 3 8 inch drill bit. Now, just, a, just one of those things, you know, you learn um, by yourself, a rare earth magnet, sticking on the bottom of your key. It's very, very hard to drop that key and have it hit the floor, okay, with that rare earth magnet on the end. There's your tip for the day, okay? Now, just an FYI, that bit is hot. <laughs> so, set it on your lathe bed, and your lathe bed is, will heat sink that heat right away from it. Another one of those little lessons, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm going to grab for a half inch dowel. Okay, I'll put that half inch dowel in the drill chuck if I open it up enough. How about an yeah, inch or so protruding out of it? I'll tighten this down. It's going to grab right under that wood, it's going to hold on to that without any trouble. And I'm going to tighten this down a lot. This is a great grab into that wood. There's no problem with that. I've never had one crush the wood so bad that it won't hold on or start wobbling. It's going to wobble a little anyway, right? This is wood. We're not dealing with steel here. Somebody needs to file your tool rest melt. I didn't bring my file with me or I'd do it. At least I don't think I did. This is what happens when you clean out your toolbox. Anybody ever done that? Cleaned out the toolbox? What for? Yeah, that's a better answer. You're right. What for? That's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll manage it. I'm very resourceful. I grew up in Kansas on a farm, so resourceful was what mattered because we couldn't afford it. And I'm just going to make sure this is round. This is a negative rake scraper, Mel. <laughs> Skew chisel on its side is a negative rake scraper. Okay. So, um... <laughs> I could use this negative rake scraper. Where's my pencil? I'm like, where'd I put my pencil? So now I'm going to mark... Um, I'm going to mark five-eighths.
if I can get the glare right on the mirror, right, ruler so I can see it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Pretty sure I knew it's that next big mark after half an inch, but. Okay, so I got my mark there. That's what I'm, I'm not, that's gonna be the length of the uh, insert that goes inside the end, end of the whistle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm fixing to make a jam chuck out of this, okay? I got my size, I'm going for three eighths, right? You know, now I could get some calipers and mark three eighths, right? I could do that. But what fun would that be, right? We'll do it just in case. Do you have any chalk? No, I don't have any chalk. <laughs> I didn't bring any with me. But now I just measured the inside of that hole. Then I'm gonna make it just a little bit more. Because you know you can always remove more wood, but you can't ever put it back on, can you? So, <laughs> well, I mean, I got lots of dowel rods in the toolbox. If I mess up, I'll just get another one out. Um, I'm going to use a um, a bedan here. Oops, better lower that tool rest a little bit. Back this off just a little more. Now you may wonder why is he backing it off? You're supposed to have it next to the wood, uh, right now next to it. You're going to see why in a minute. too far. At least it felt like it anyway. Yeah, I went, I went just a little too far. But it fits. It fits. So that's my measuring guide. This mine's already the right size. Now I want to be real careful and keep checking this. Pretty good at the end, but it gets tight there. And I want it to be a little bit tight, but I also wanted to know I can take it off later too. Because <laughs> I've got to be able to take it off when I get back to the other part. So, this is one of those lessons about the uniqueness. Unique rabbit. You know how you catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on it. The jokes are free to everybody, by the way. You probably won't invite me back after them either. So. Still getting a little too tight down there. We're going to stop there and check that out. Because <laughs> I want you all to think I know what I'm doing. I really don't, but I want you all to think that. Oh, that's, pretty, that's still pretty tight. Oh, I knock it out around a little bit. Oh, well, that's okay. Mm, still too tight. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to take one more cut here. <laughs> That'll do. Okay, because I want a jam chuck in place here. I want it to actually hold on like it's supposed to be. Oh, this block of wood is ideally four inches long. You cut a three inch hole, right? Four inches long, right? Okay. <coughs> Put this up here. Now you gotta be real careful in this part because if you push too much on the tail sock, you actually start pushing your dowel rod in inside your drill chuck, okay? Just enough to get it tight. Then kind of stop there. All right. Now I'm going to just, you know, do the exciting part, the rounding it off.
You paid for a whistle show, right? That was a whistle. Not round yet, but I'm getting there. And as far as the shape of the whistle goes, you can have a lot of fun with this. You can make it look like a carrot. You can make it look like a, um, a pencil with an eraser on the end. You can do all kinds of fun things with making these whistles look like whatever you want to make them look like. Um, my main goal was just to achieve round. I didn't even get it in one spot there, but that's okay. We'll turn it down in a minute. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure off and mark out three inches. Why does that matter? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> So I know where the end of that hole's at, okay? In case I start bringing this down to size, I'm not going to get myself in trouble, right? <coughs> now, let me look at my diagram I made for myself and mark out. So I'm going to mark off 5 eighths. It doesn't really matter where I mark it from. And I'm going to go a half inch from that. These dimensions are going to matter here in a little bit. Make sure I marked them in the right place. Yep, I sure did. Okay. So now I'm, now I'm going to use that skew chisel really as a skew chisel mill, okay? In case that, you know, had you bothered about that, okay? I'm about ready to walk out. I thought maybe you were, yeah. I mean,. To make myself a couple of cuts there. I'm going to use the banana, that worked pretty well. You're kidding. Yeah, I, I can believe it. Um, I'm sitting there for 5 eighths because that's the size I want of my barrel down here. So. Actually, I want all this down to five eighths. Looks kind of like a duck call, doesn't it? That's close enough. For those of you who don't know about scraping, I'll do a little scraping. Oh, hello. See, Mel, I told you I'd make one mistake so everybody could see it. <laughs> this is true. I have cut whistles all the way through, I will admit that. Okay? That is part of the fun of this whole project, you know, is not to cut it all the way through. Ah, I was going to say, I took all my sandpaper and laid it out somewhere. Where did I do that? Okay. So, 
This is going to be the only time you have to sand this part of the whistle. Say sand, sand, and go on. <laughs> New part. A couple of tool marks there. Mm, I think they're going to be okay though. I can claim this is design modification. Embellishment. Yes, embellishment. You also want to sand this edge over a little bit just because that's going to be where somebody's going to put their mouth against eventually. I'm sorry? Um, I believe it's maple. It actually came off of a farm near where Mel's friend lives. He's the one, Wilford's the one that sawed it. So. So that's, that's pretty close to a good looking barrel. Now, and again, this is where you get to have your fun. You can make whatever shape you want. But I kind of promised Vaughn when I emailed him about what I was going to do, that we would have some fun with this one, okay? So, I'm going to make a captive ring as your bonus for tonight. And if we have time, I'll do one more bonus at the end. But it's a really fun bonus, and I don't want to spoil anybody's idea what that might be. So, well, the first thing I'll do is I'll get my captive ring ready, make a bead. If I were really good, I would actually mark it out, but... Matter of fact, I will get a parting tool and lay it out a little easier. I'm going to give myself a little extra room. Because as soon as I reach for that captive ring tool, I'm going to run out of room real fast. I'll need more room on either side. I've learned this over the years about the captive ring tools. Whoopsie. Whoopsie is okay. Four letter words after whoopsie is a different thing. My bead's not really a bead yet. But I don't have one of those quarter inch detail gouge things. I'm not that advanced. Actually, I just dropped all my sandpaper too. This is the last chance to sand the captive ring also. And once you cut it off there, you'll never sand it again unless you do it all by hand. I didn't bend down with my long hair and have any problems that I was worried that I was going to get my hair caught. Okay. I want you all to keep that in mind. All right. So now, you all probably noticed me with the captive ring tool earlier. I got a piece of pipe over it, a tubing over it. Because if that tip breaks off, that's a useless captive ring tool. And I did drop it. It landed, it landed point down. So having that tube on there, save that tool so and the tubing is cheap the tools are not now a captive ring tool is a scraper so i'm going to raise my tool rest up and we'll cut in a little from each side that's a little too much Ooh, that side's dull. I'm 
cut in just a little bit on each side. Just by taking a, um, a stone and going across the top, just to sharpen it. Matter of fact, you know what? We might just do that and make it look like I know what I'm doing. Get it on the flat. Eventually you will sharpen it down, but I've made hundreds of rings and I, this is the first time I've sharpened it, so. Holy cow, that makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk it? I'm cutting deeper on one side than I am the other, but that's okay. Okay, it's free. Now, first thing I do is put that back inside there. Because I don't know how many other people have done that, but I'm going to be expecting it. You have to cut down the capture ring, past the capture ring a little bit and make it look good. Now, I didn't bring any tape with me. I think there's some in the drawer. There is? Oh yeah, how about that? Good deal. <laughs> for those of you who have never sanded the inside of a captive ring, this will be your treat for the day. You'll also get to see how good I am at taping, or rather, how good I'm not at taping. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you got to think about it for a minute, because when you hook this on there, that lathe is going to be spinning, right? So I have to have it so it'll actually wrap around it, right? Is that going to be right? No, it's not. It's going to be the other way. Like I said, I always got to think about it, you know. Slip this over top of it. That might be too much sandpaper, actually. We'll find out real shortly whether or not I picked the right amount, huh? We'll sand the inside of that captive ring. Sandpaper just wrapped up inside there on it, and it does the whole captive ring on the inside all by itself. Now just pull that off there. You can see it did the sanding on it, so it's sanded the back side of the captive ring. That's your next tip for the night. Okay? I wish I had good tips. I mean, I think these are some decent tips, you know. I did learn a good tip a long time ago never play cards with a man named Ace. That's a good tip, you know. So, like I said, the jokes are free, you know. I'm here all week trying to veal. So, okay. Now we got to make it look like something other than just a peg leg or something. Right? Remember, that marks where my hole is at, right? Let's remember that, okay? Somebody remember that for me, all right? Oh, I didn't lower the tool rest. I'm like, why is this not right? Doesn't feel good. What's worse, it didn't sound good either. 